Today we're going to see how we can be able to shrink fibroids. We've talked about this in a previous video. So we now know the information about how they form, types of them, some of the signs and symptoms or some of the complications you get when you have fibroids. So we are not going to focus on that. We are going to focus today on treatments and prevention. Now we already know that uh, fibroids we usually don't actually know how they usually start, but we know some of the things that usually contribute to them forming in the first place. So if we can be able to fix whatever is causing them, then we can be able to get rid of them. And if you already have them, then we still have ways we can be able to get rid of them. But in most cases, you actually don't need to treat them because at one point, around 50% of women, by the time they are getting to their 50s, they have had fibroids at some point. So it's something that's very common. But the thing is, most of them usually don't grow. So they are tiny and they are not affecting your fertility. They are not affecting anything to do with your menstrual cycle. So they're just there. You just leave them. You can just sit down and observe. But if they are troublesome, they are large or they are many, sometimes it's good to have them treated because they might contribute to some of the signs and symptoms that we saw in our previous video. So if you want to find all the information about that, then go check that video. But today we're going to talk about fixing that. It's important also to know that uh, estrogen has a big role when it comes to causing them to grow and forming in the first place. So it's usually very important to see how you can be able to deal with estrogen so that you don't get to have, if you already have them, to reduce their growth and even uh, shrink them or to make sure that you don't have them in the first place. But we have several methods. First one is slowing the growth of the fibroids using the medications. And uh, we also have the physical removal using surgical procedure. And also we have dietary modifications, which is what we are going to look at today. One of the biggest concern is why do we have so many dark skinned people getting this condition, especially when uh, they are uh, out of the tropics. So they're in the temperate region, they're in US, UK, all those places. They tend to suffer so much from fibroids. But you're going to see the reason in a very few seconds here. And also, it's usually the lower cases. If that person comes back to the tropical region where we have the equator and the sun is almost throughout the year, you find them that uh, they recover or the fibroids either disappear or they shrink. Now, you need to understand one thing. We have vitamin D, which is very important. And this is what I was alluding to earlier on. But vitamin D is very important. And I mentioned this in a video, this video here. So if you want to know the, the importance of vitamin D and uh, the connection between uh, the black people, the white people with vitamin D and their deficiency and also even calcium, you can check on that video. Now, let's continue. Now, remember, vitamin D is very important in the body. And there was a study that was conducted on people that had a deficiency in vitamin D. There was a correlation between them and having high incidences of fibroids, meaning there is a connection between these two. Now, why is it that uh, black people, most of them usually have uh, issues with uh, these fibroids when they're in temperate region? In temperate, I mean areas where they have the four seasons. They have all the four seasons. Within the equator, there's no seasons, actually. There are very few variations when it comes to the temperature. But now, when it comes to the temperature, we have winter and we have all the times when uh, there is no sun that's overhead. Now, this is now narrowing down to the skin. In your skin, if you are dark skinned and you are in any part of the country, your body is meant or it was ab adapted to stay within the tropical where there is no season, where the sun is throughout. Because now you are dark because of high amount of melanin, which is a filter that reduces the amount of UV passing into your body. But then it allows a tiny amount of that UV light to get in to help in a production of vitamin D. That's why we usually say skin helps in production of vitamin D and it's very important. Now, you move from the tropical region, you go to the temperate where you don't actually get enough sunshine. When you get there, you start getting issues with vitamin D and also calcium. We'll focus on vitamin D. Now, the same case. Now, you are in a same situation with a white person and they have less of that melanin. Meaning that uh, the, the, the little amount of sunshine that's there, they are able to accumulate enough uh, UV light for the uh, manufacture of vitamin D. Now, this vitamin D is less in uh, dark-skinned people because they already have their melanin. And this melanin is blocking most of the UV light, and mind you, there is no enough sunshine there, so they end up having very little um, production of uh, that vitamin D from exposure to UV light. So that's the reason. 
And um, there was a high correlation, like I mentioned, of vitamin D. And also there was another study where people with a vitamin D deficiency were, who had fibroids were given supplements for vitamin D and there was a significant reduction on the size or in the size of their fibroids. So there is a high correlation. Now, what are the sources of vitamin D? The one that we mentioned. Now, if you are dark skinned, you need a higher exposure to light compared to a light skinned person for the same amount of vitamin D produced by your skin. So you need to expose yourself to sun for production of vitamin D because majority of that, we have other organs that really help in manufacture of the same, and even diet. You can even also get that in diet, but your skin contributes to the majority amount of vitamin D in your body. Now, let's go to the sources. Apart from the sun, we have other things that you can do. Now, in case you're not accessing a lot of that sunshine, then you can modify your diet uh, to eat something like a fatty fish. They contain a lot of vitamin D. And especially the animal products. They usually contain vitamin D3, which increases the amount of vitamin D you have in the body. We have sardines and we have herrings. We have cod liver oil. The egg yolk is very important, especially that comes from the uh, free range chicken and also mushroom. Now, for the mushroom, we have a variation of vitamin D because in mushroom, we are going to find vitamin D2. It's usually less efficient compared to vitamin D3, which usually comes from animal products. But again, it's good in case maybe you don't have other sources, mushroom is one of them. If you have fibroids, you need to avoid foods that contain growth factors like milk or dairy products. Now, this or the milk products or the dairy products are actually meant for the calf or the growing whatever that it was supposed to be given. Now take for example the dairy milk is supposed to give uh, all the growth factors to the calf so it contains the hormones and they are going to accelerate the growth of that fibroid that you have. So it's good to avoid them if you have this and you're planning to have them shrunk. So this is one. You also need to avoid soy. It's very estrogenic, so you want to stay away from this and from all versions of soy. Because now, remember, we are trying to avoid a high amount of estrogen in the body. And if you are taking soy, it mimics that. Very importantly, you need to fix insulin resistance. If you are overweight, if you are obese, if you are pre-diabetic or you are diabetic, you really need to fix that because insulin is a very powerful growth hormone. And we have seen in previous videos what insulin does to our bodies. Garlic usually contain an active compound called alicin and this has shown to shrink the fibroids and also it usually remove catabolic waste from the uterus, from the ovaries, and also it helps uh, reverse the growth of the fibroids. Tomatoes, those ones, whether they are cooked or raw, they usually balance or they usually help in uh, balancing the estrogen because they usually contain lycopene and allergic acid, which usually help in shrinking the fibroids naturally. Also, do you see those uh, bright colored fruits and vegetables? They usually contain antioxidants that will get rid of the free radicals in the body and this will improve your menstrual health. Like we mentioned, mushrooms will contain uh, vitamin D2. Uh, okay, in animals we have D3, but uh, they all contribute to the same thing. So if you have mushrooms, increase the intake. But for the mushrooms, I'm um, a little bit specific here, the wild ones, the ones that you find in the wild, because that's the point where they, they are facing the UV and uh, they are going to have this vitamin D2 in plenty. Green leafy vegetables usually provide indole 3 carbinols, which usually help in balancing estrogen and this will always help in uh, shrinking the fibroids. Also, do you see that iodine in uh, that soil or to whatever form? There is some seaweed that usually contain iodine. If you can be able to take that increase the intake, it will provide you with a natural iodine and this usually help in uh, getting rid of the tumors, the ovarian cysts and also fibroids. So you have something like uh, peppermint and you have rosemary and they usually, these herbs usually contain phytonutrients that we call ulcerolic acid and these are the factors that usually uh, limit the growth factor. So this, by limiting the growth factors, by default you are going to limit how much the fibroids are going to grow. We have turmeric and this is one of the, let's say, the most healing spices in the world. So it contains very powerful compounds we call calcumin and this usually inhibits the growth of fibroids. And also it helps in regulating the hormones like uh, the insulin. So it's very important if you can be able to access one, try to include it in most of your meals. Now another thing is getting pregnant. Now. Remember, we mentioned estrogen almost every time we are mentioning fibroids. Now, if you get pregnant, estrogen, the production of estrogen is usually inhibited because now the body wants to conserve everything for the growing fetus. 
So what you're going to end up with is progesterone. So by limiting the amount of estrogen that you have, they mostly stop growing or start shrinking. And uh, in uh, some few cases, they usually disappear if they were small enough. But if they are large, sometimes it can even affect the pregnancy. So it will depend with the size of the fibroids that you have. So this is where now your doctor comes in. You need to have that checked out. If the doctor knows exactly the size of what they can be able to tell, the better. If you can get pregnant, if that's what you're looking up to, or why not? Just get pregnant. We have another one which is very interesting, uh, castor oil. This one... We don't have so much uh, studies about this one, but it usually contains lacinoleic acid, which is one of the major components. And it usually has so many things like we're going to see in another video, I think the next one. So just stay tuned. But it has shown uh, so many promising results when used on your navel, on your belly button. We have looked at our home remedies. Let's look at some medical remedies that we have. We have GnRH, which is gonadotropin releasing hormones, these are the analogs. And they are artificially produced hormones and they usually inhibit the production of estrogen in the ovaries. So they are not good for long-term use due to the side effects like osteoporosis and also it's not possible to become pregnant when you're taking them because they inhibit the production of estrogen. And estrogen is one of the important um, hormones that will help in uh, building the wall so th that wall is very important for the formation or for the implantation so if you don't have that estrogen you're not going to have a conducive place for that to even happen and after that estrogen that's when the ovulation takes place and all that so um, if you affect that then pregnancy becomes something a little bit hard so the second one is a uh, hormonal intrauterine devices the one that we looked at i think in this video IUDs. They are progestin based and they usually mimic progesterone. And uh, this, like you remember, uh, we mentioned a point about pregnancy. So the progesterone usually kind of uh, poses everything. And from there, you're going to limit the production of estrogen. And the estrogen, like we said, estrogen and fibroids usually in the same or subgroup. We have birth control pills. And uh, this one's progestin only pills. And uh, the combination pills that usually contain uh, some amount of estrogen and um, progesterone or progestin. Now, this ones will work the same way that we mentioned about the intrauterine devices because you have progestin here, it will kind of trick your body into thinking that you're already pregnant. If you want to get more information about fibroids, I'm sending you to this video here. And also, if you want to learn something about PCOS, this video here, and also this one here about hormonal imbalances.